This video is sponsored by GamerLink. If you're looking for new ways to find people to game with, GamerLink is worth trying. Available for free on iOS and Android, whether you want a partner for hardcore ranked play or a chill late night gaming companion, GamerLink's beacon system will help you find that person. With support for over 200 games across all the major systems, Titanfall 2 being one of their newer supported titles, there's a great chance you'll find someone. You can check out GamerLink via the link in the description. Now without further ado, let's start today's video. The most important aspect of a first person shooter is the shooting. If the guns don't feel good, the game doesn't feel good. In Titanfall 2, there are six primary weapon categories and two secondary weapon categories, and each is filled with unique weapons with a distinct look and feel that affect how you play the game. Today, we're going to talk about the light machine gun primary weapons and the anti-titan secondary weapons. Before we get started, anytime I reference damage numbers, I'm referring to a spreadsheet created by a fellow Titanfall player named Matt H. Unfortunately, because of the way Respawn handles their patches, some of these numbers will be off by a few points, but they're mostly correct. Now let's get started. When you're tired of playing with pea shooters and puny little handguns, you can put on your big boy pants and start using a light machine gun. These hulking automatic weapons can and will send a seemingly never-ending spray of bullets down range and will make anyone on the receiving end think twice about crossing your line of fire. Unfortunately, it's not always someone standing across from you on the battlefield. When the titans start falling, break out your anti-titan weapon and get ready to blow them up. We're gonna start with the Devotion, because it's no secret that this gun is a masterpiece. It was without a doubt plucked from the same mold that gave birth to the Vault. And just like its smaller, equally flawless counterpart, it lacks intangible qualities, something I like to call a soul. Its per bullet damage is extraordinary, and its performance at range is what you'd expect from a high powered light machine gun. Its recoil is unnaturally low, and its hipfire accuracy is comparable if not better than the hip fire on other automatic pilot weapons that can't compete with the other top tier statistics that were packed into the devotion. It's like the people that made this were contracted to make a gun that ends all other guns. And they succeeded, but they missed the mark. Aside from its unique ramping rate of fire, wielding this weapon doesn't feel like wielding anything at all. Whatever fancy tech that was packed into this thing before it left the factory does all the heavy lifting for you. Just point and shoot. It won't just get the job done, it'll get every job done, and you won't even feel like you've broken a sweat once the work is finished. Which is fine, but fine doesn't always feel good. Watching someone struggle to relive their glory days is very sad, but watching that same someone slowly remember all the things they were great at and the impressive feats they were capable of, that's truly amazing. The Spitfire is a classic light machine gun. While the need for suppressive fire has dwindled as pilots can easily outmaneuver a wild, horizontal spray of hip fire, and that technique is largely ineffective coming from such a cumbersome weapon with more kick than a mule, the Spitfire has managed to hold on to and dignify its category. Despite what it says on the box, it doesn't punch as hard as the Devotion. Its rate of fire pales in comparison to most other automatic weapons, and like I said before, it kicks like a mule and has a terrible hipfire performance. And this might sound petty, but it doesn't look as cool as the Devotion. So what's the deal with the Spitfire? Why do I get chills after holding down the trigger for 10 seconds and emptying a full magazine? Why do I enjoy wrestling with an uncontrollable wild animal? Why should I bother with a gun that's clearly a relic from the past? While its flaws aren't nearly as forgettable as the quirks on the Devotion, it does have consistency. 
Its steady, seemingly never-ending stream of bullets might not keep a pilot pinned down, but they will take them out if you keep the Spitfire under control. That's another thing. Once you've had your fun spraying and praying, controlled fire with this gun can make a single magazine last for minutes at a time. Additionally, while it does kick hard, its recoil is predictable. Unlike the alternator and the flatline, the shakes don't feel random and out of control. There's no denying the negatives of the Spitfire, but it has positives as well. It's an old gun, but it's got enough heart and soul to keep fighting, even in a brave new world. Since we're talking about things from another era, I think the Archer Heavy Rocket is a good candidate for our next weapon of discussion. The Archer Heavy Rocket is a bazooka, a weapon type that hasn't changed much since its creation. The Archer is simple, but wildly effective. It sends a big-ass rocket flying towards a big-ass titan, and when it hits that big-ass titan, it does some big-ass damage. Featuring the highest per shot damage in the anti-titan category, the Archer Heavy Rocket isn't for a pilot that's looking to whittle down their enemies. You've got to want to finish the fight with a few deadly haymakers, but here's where things start to go downhill. Haymakers are powerful, but they're slow and predictable. Unlike other anti-titan weapons, the Archer Heavy Rocket requires you to lock onto your target before firing. This wouldn't be a huge issue if Titans didn't have a system in place to notify them when someone's about to blow them up. You can work around this by firing behind a covered position, but there's still a problem. The rockets you fire are relatively slow, and if an enemy Titan knows you're locking onto them, they'll have plenty of time to prepare a quick sidestep to completely mitigate your attack. Couple that with the Archer Rocket's low rate of fire, and suddenly the weapon doesn't seem all that great. But then you remember how much damage you can deal with one well-placed shot. This weapon has its shortcomings, but if you can work out when the right time is to fire, you'll turn the tide of battles in a very explosive way. Where the Archer Heavy Rocket is big and accurate but easy to dodge, the Charge Rifle and MGL are small, accurate, and will have Titans losing their minds because they can't seem to get away from them. The Charge Rifle is a pinpoint accurate laser that can whittle down enemy Titans from clear across Angel City. The MGL is a short-range grenade launcher that, when used intelligently, will have Titans doomed and confused before they realize what's going on. These anti-Titan weapons are the conservative answer to the overly ambitious wombo combo that is the Archer. They get the job done when used as intended. The charge rifle, when equipped with its charge hack modification, has the highest damage per second in its category, putting it up to a maximum of about 1,000 damage per second. In layman's terms, you can bring a legion to its knees in less than 15 seconds. The MGL can output similar numbers, but good luck getting a Titan to stand within maximum range of your grenades for that long. These two weapons are statistically sound and are the perfect choice for a grunt or pilot that doesn't like to leave things up to chance. Personally, I go big or go home, so you'll see me with a bazooka most of the time. But if you don't like to live dangerously, I understand. The L-Star is not a light machine gun. It's in that category, yes, but it's either there ironically or to fulfill some sort of quota. Everything about this weapon screams experimental. It's a middle ground between assault rifles and submachine guns. Its damage performance at range is solid, but good luck hitting a far away, fast-moving target with your slow-moving projectiles, at least until you get comfortable. 
At close range, its hipfire performance is near perfect, and it'll turn your enemies into red mist before they have time to ask themselves, is he using an L-star? It's managed to succeed at filling a very strange niche that may not have needed filling, but there's more. The L-Star has special properties that no other gun has. It doesn't have ammunition in the traditional sense. Instead, it generates heat and can continue firing until it overheats. When it does, you've got to change the radiator cartridge and the beam emitter doohickey, all of which takes a whopping 6 seconds. In an ideal world, you'll manage to keep your L-Star nice and cool and thus never need to reload, which, in theory, is amazing. In practice, the frantic beeping of an overheating L-Star is a reminder that you've either got to get your shit together and kill your target, or prepare to face some bullets, a boot, or a teabag. And I don't mean Earl Grey. The L-Star is a great experimental weapon that gets outclassed by every other weapon in the ease of use department, and by some in other categories like rate of fire and damage. With that said, it's not bad and you're not crazy for using it. But you might be a glutton for punishment. While we're on the subject of experiments, someone over at the IMC thought it'd be interesting to name an anti-Titan weapon that shocks those giant death machines into submission with balls of lightning, the Thunderbolt. This is the fourth and final weapon designed specifically for taking down the heaviest armor on the battlefield. While it doesn't pack the hardest punch in its category, its unique properties make it, at the very least, interesting. Each lightning bolt you fire from the Thunderbolt will deal some hefty impact and splash damage to whatever Titan you come across, but it will also deal damage if it completely misses the mark. And that's a good thing because despite its namesake, its projectiles move slower than New York City traffic during rush hour. It's a powerful weapon, and it has the potential to severely damage multiple titans even if they dodge out of the way. When you consider every bit of damage an enemy titan takes is permanent, suddenly firing a blue ball of death in the general direction of the bad guys and waiting for it to hit or not hit something doesn't sound like such a terrible idea. At best, you'll land a direct hit. At worst, you'll shock the competition, creep back into a safe place while you reload and prepare for another shot. This weapon, just like the L-Star, is fun, and it does damage, but with other more reliable options, it's hard to justify. I mean, okay, red balls of death and blue balls of lightning, that should be reason enough to pick up the L-Star and the Thunderbolt. But is it? After all, the Spitfire makes me feel like John Rambo, and the Archer Heavy Rocket is a frickin' bazooka. The Charge Rifle and the MGL, they're just good. They're always good, probably the best two anti-Titan weapons you can pick from. And then the devotion, we all know what the deal is with that thing. Alright, what if I told you, you'll become a legend if you get good with these weapons? Still not reason enough to pick them up? Fine, what if I gave you a cake if you use the L-Star for a week? Still not willing to use it? Five bucks, I'll give you five bucks if you use a pink thunderbolt. Six bucks, final offer. Seven. Eight bucks to use the Thunderbolt and I'm not going any higher. Alright, alright, you don't have to use the L-Star and the Thunderbolt if you don't want to. So this is going to be the conclusion for this video and for this series of Titanfall 2 weapon overviews. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more Titanfall 2 content in the future. We've got new game modes coming out, new maps. There's still a lot of stuff to cover for Titanfall and this game has a very bright future. So as always, the name of the game, you already know it's Titanfall 2. The name of the channel is iBlueAirJGR Gaming for Comedy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.